hardy horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hardy high silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! There's danger on the trail ahead! Oh, Silver! Away! Tad Wilkins walked along the crude boardwalk which served as a pavement in the pioneer town of Elbow Bend. His eyes, as he again read the letter he had received, were worried. His forehead wrinkled with a frown. He slowly opened the door of an office whose large, weather-beaten sign read Wells Fargo. He went in to join his assistant, Lane Tolliver. Well, howdy, Ted. Been down to pick up the mail? Huh? What's eating you? You look like old man trouble himself. Oh, it's, it's nothing, Tolliver. Just a letter, that's all. What's in it? Bad news? No, no nothing like that. Just puzzling. It's from Avery Baird. He's coming to Elbow Bend on today's stage. Avery Baird, huh? He's district manager for Wells Fargo, ain't he? Yes, he wants me to meet the stage. Let us say why he's coming? No, he says he's coming. That's what puzzles me. I've been in charge of this office for three years, and he never visited me before. Maybe something's wrong, and he wants to check up on it. What do you mean? Well, I heard that the last time Baird came here to look the office over, it's before you and me were hired, he was on account of shortages in cash. Shortages in cash. The man who was in charge of the office went to jail. Reckon he's still there. Now, see here, Tolliver, if you're accusing me of stealing the company's money... Well, I ain't accusing you anything than Tad. I'm just telling you what I heard. Well, maybe so, but I don't like the way you said it. Oh, cool off. That letter's giving you the jeebies. What you need is a drink. Hmm. Baird couldn't be coming here because there's money missing. At least I don't think he could. Unless... Yeah, this'll fix you up. I thought I told you to stop drinking during office hours, Tolliver. Come off of it, Tad. A little snort once in a while is a man of world good. Here, drink this and see for yourself. I don't want it. Oh, drink it. Take your mind off that letter. Oh, all right. <laughs> you look better already. Tolliver. Yeah? Maybe there's something in what you say. I mean, about there being something wrong. Well, of course, it's only a guess. We've I... still got two hours before Baird gets here. If any mistakes have been made, I want to know about them. I got the books you've been keeping, and I'll get mine. Wait a minute. You ain't accusing me of stealing cash from the company. Of course not. But one of us might have made a mistake in our bookkeeping. It ain't likely. Well, you check my books, and I'll check yours. That way, we'll... Oh. What's the matter? <laughs> my head feels kind of funny. Like it's trying to spin. Maybe you ought to go home and lie down, Dad. Uh, I want to go over those books. 
Well, you're the boss. I'll get them. I don't know what's come over me. I never felt this way before. Here's my books, Ted. I'll check over yours. Yeah, all right. Let's see here. Mm -hmm. My eyes, they won't focus. All your figures are just a blur. Take my advice, Ted, and go home for a spell. Appears to me you're a sick man. But, Mr. Baird, I'm supposed to meet him. I'll meet him at the stage and explain everything. Well, all right, Tolliver. I'll, I'll leave it in your hands. Well, that's a ticket. Just leave everything to me, Tad. And you won't have to worry about a thing. Reckon you must be Mr. Baird. Yes, that's right. You Miss Wilkins? No, no, my name's Tolliver. Lane Tolliver. I'm Tad's assistant. I don't understand. My letter, I expressly asked for Mr. Wilkins to meet me. Well, Tad went home. Said he had a headache. <laughs> I shouldn't wonder if he had. What I suspect is going on in his office is true. Well, let me take your bags. I'll show you to the office. When did Wilkins' uh, headache occur? I reckon it commenced about the same time he got your letter. He was mighty worried and upset when he read it. Oh, he was, huh? Yeah. Then he got out his account book so as to correct any mistakes he might have made. I see. I hope there's nothing wrong, Mr. Baird. There's something very definitely wrong, Tolliver. It looks as if I may not be long in tracing the trouble. Oh, here's the office. Now have a chair, Mr. Baird. I reckon you're tired after your trip, so make yourself comfortable. There'll be time enough for that later. Right now, I want to look at Wilkins' books. Oh, yes, sir. I'll get him for you. Ever notice anything strange about Wilkins' behavior, Tolliver? Well, now that you mention it, he's acted kind of funny on several occasions. Like he was doing something he, he didn't want me to know about. Mm. Yes, I thought so. These are Wilkins' books, hmm? Huh? Yes, sir. We each keep our own accounts. Uh, there's no point in my looking further now, Tolliver. Everything I want to know is right here in black and white. You mean... Is something wrong with Tad's account? Not just wrong, but criminal. According to these records, he's been stealing money regularly from the company for the past six months. Jumping snakes. As soon as I've had dinner, I want you to take me to Wilkins' house. I'm going to face him with his crime. Sometime later, an Indian astride a paint and a boy who sat on an all-white colt rode along a wagon trail not far from town. They were Tonto and Dan Reed, the Lone Ranger's nephew. Is it very far to camp now, Tonto? Maybe three, four miles. Lone Ranger make camp in Arroyo. We get there plenty soon. Uh, golly, I hope there'll be something good for dinner. I'm starved. <laughs> Long ride make you plenty hungry, eh? Oh, 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 oh. Hey, who do you suppose fired that shot, Tonto? I don't see anybody, do you? Shot come from behind trees. House on the other side. Maybe shot come from house. Oh, gosh, maybe we better investigate. Ah, get him up, Scout. Come on, Victor. There, house. Tonto, look. There's a horse hitched out in front. Ah, we ride to back a house, Dan. Maybe not be seen. Oh, Victor, hold on. Oh, Scout, hold on. Oh. Oh. Here, but, but why? I... Me look in window. Me see man bend over body on floor. Maybe him murder. A murderer? Then why no, can't I? No, you wait. Lone Ranger not want you to risk danger. Me tell you when it's safe to come. All right, Tonto. If you say so. You lift hands. What? You not make move or me shoot. Oh, Tonto. Tonto, don't you remember me? Oh, you once outlaw. Lone Ranger saved your life. You tell him you reform. That's right. Lefty Harris is a name. I've kept my word. I have reformed. Then why you shoot, man? Shoot? Huh. Why, I didn't shoot Tad. I found him like this just before you saw me. Tad Wilkins was my friend. He asked me to visit him tonight. Oh. Him dead? Yeah, he's dead. If I ever get my hands in the pool cat who killed what him, I'll... What is it, Tonto? What's happened? Me not know yet, Dan. Me see... Oh, here. Here's something on their body. Well, it's a note. Oh, golly, what does it say? You read it, Dan. Maybe it tells who the murderer is. There is no murderer. Tad killed himself. What? 
Well, I don't believe it. Tad wrote this note. He says he's been stealing cash from the Wells Fargo for months and that he'd rather die than rot in jail when he's found out. Oh. The note says that all that's left of the cash he stole is in a box on the shelf over the wash bench. I'll go look. Now, here. Here, gun on the shoulder. Was it Tad's gun, Toto? Well, it got initials on it. T.W., yeah, you're right. Oh, golly, it's hard to believe that he took his own life. One bullet fired. There was cash in that box, all right. Didn't amount to an awful lot. To think that Tad was robbing his employers doesn't make sense. Yeah, he must have needed money awful bad to do that. Oh, that's strange. What, Tonto? Note written with pen and ink. Yeah, that's right, pen and ink. And dried with sand. Ah, me look, me not find pen and ink here. What? Gosh, now that you mention it, well, I don't see ink or pen around here anywhere either. Well, I don't savvy. How did he... Ink dried with sand, but no sand here either. Well, if that doesn't beat everything, there ought to be at least a shaker of it on a desk. No pen, no ink, no sand. Why, it's as plain as day. Tad couldn't have written that note. Ah, uh, him not suicide, him murdered. Murdered? Golly, I'd better keep this note then and let the law find him murdered. That's it. I'll take Tad's gun, Tonto. Uh-huh. Uh, if only we had some clue to the killer. Uh, me look outside, maybe find track. I'll go with you. I'll wait here, Tonto, and look around inside. Dan, come. We go out back way. We'll revenge you, Tad. We'll find the killer. We won't rest till we see him hang. You've got three on your side. I have a hunch before we're through, there'll be a fourth. A lone ranger. What? Sheriff! What's going on Mr. here? Mr. Baird, look. It's Tad Wilkins. He... He's dead. What's that? He's dead, all right. Drilled through the heart. Well, I reckon when Tad learned you were coming, Mr. Baird, he made up his mind to cheat the law, so he shot himself. So you think it's suicide, huh, Tolliver? Stands to reason, don't it? Found himself trapped after stealing all that cash, so he took the easiest way out. Well, there's no proof of that, Tolliver. It ain't. Maybe you expected him to leave a note or something. Why not? Ain't that what suicides usually do? Well, there ain't no note. There ain't no gun. Appears to me it ain't suicide at all, but murder. Murder? Well, that's ridiculous, Sheriff. Who would want to murder him? I've got a pretty good idea. What are you looking at me for, Sheriff? You don't think I... You used to be pretty handy with a gun, Lefty. Well, I've reformed. I'm traveling straight now. I haven't packed a gun since I was on the prod. Maybe so. But if you don't mind, I'll see for myself. Go ahead, search me. See if I'm not telling the truth. Oh, never mind, Sheriff. You don't need to search me. I'm thinking different. I'll help you, Sheriff. I'll handle this myself, Tolliver. What's this? That's Tad's gun, Sheriff. I found it beside him on the floor. I can see it's his gun. It's got his initials on it. But what are you doing with it? I... Well, I... Ah, one shot fired, eh? Reckon there's no doubt but that he did it. Perhaps he learned that Wilkins had a lot of cash he'd stolen from Wells Fargo, Sheriff. He killed him in order to get it for himself. Yeah, that's a ticket. That's a lie. Tad Wilkins was my friend. So you and Tad were friends, eh? Yes. He asked me to visit him tonight. Two of a kind. A reformed outlaw and a swindler. You found out Tad was lifting money from the company, so you blackmailed him. No. He tried to kill you, but you beat him to the gun. Looks to me like a clear case of murder. It's not true, I tell you. I'll prove it. Just before you came, there was an Indian with me. He's outside now. Oh, what are you giving me? He was here with me. An Indian and a boy. You must have seen him when you rode up. There was just one horse hitched in front when we came, Lefty. And that's yours. But I'm innocent, I tell you. There's the dead man. We found you alone with him. Here's the gun with one shot fired. I didn't do it. I don't know anything about it. All I know is I got enough evidence to hang you, Lefty. Come on. I'm taking you to jail. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
continue our story. That night, two figures crept stealthily to the cell window of the small jail in which Lefty Harris was imprisoned. Lefty. Lefty Harris. Who is it? Who's there? Me, Tonto. Me bring Dan. Tonto? I thought you deserted me when you didn't come back to Tad's cabin. We didn't desert you. We waited in the back and overheard everything that went on between you and the sheriff. Then we rode to tell a Lone Ranger. Ah, uh, we bring message from Lone Ranger. Message? What's he say? Him say you not worry. Him find way to get you free. You mean he doesn't believe I murdered Tad? He believes I'm innocent? Of course he does. Uh. Well, I wasn't sure. I mean, he knows I've been an outlaw. I thought he'd figure I broke my promise to him. Went gunning for Tad. Lone Ranger not believe that. Him suspect other fella murder Tad. Other fella? Who do you mean? Lane Tolliver. Oh, that's right. Oh, the low-down skunk. If the sheriff will only listen to him. Him not listen without proof. But he's got to. They're going to hang me. He's got to know the truth. Him no truth. Lone Ranger not let you die. You bet he won't. You get that proof, Lefty. You just wait and see. Sometime later, crouching in the shadows of the Wells Fargo Express office, the Lone Ranger and Tonto stole quietly to a window. It's locked, Tonto. Mm. We break glass? Yes, we'll have to. The only way we can be certain of Tolliver's guilt is to examine those books. Mm. Not right. Then we'll signal us from his watch post if the noise attracts attention. I'll use my gun, but... Dare not make signal. The sound wasn't very loud. There. I'll be able to open it. switching the books, and making Baird believe that his own dishonest accounts were Tad's. Ah, him plenty smart. We use book to catch Crook? No, Tonto. I have a better idea. But first, I want to talk to Baird. Me savvy. If my plan works, tomorrow we'll trap the killer. Listen. chance of catching them two, Tolliver. The night swallowed them up. Who were they? Masked man and an Indian, Mr. Baird. I was passing by the office when I saw the lamp. Indian, eh? Lefty Harris mentioned an Indian when I arrested him. That's right. These two must be some friends of the outlaws or something. What were they doing here? We were trying to rob the safe, I reckon, Mr. Baird. I saw them working over it. Yeah, I guess you're right. Lucky you happened along when you did, Tolliver. They might have gotten away with the cash. Well, I would have stepped in and caught them red-handed the minute I saw them, Sheriff, but I... I wasn't carrying a gun. Even so, the company will appreciate your quick thinking, Tolliver. We'll have a talk in the morning. I believe I can safely say that tonight's work will not uh, go unrewarded. The next day, Lane Tolliver and Avery Bear, district manager for Wells Fargo, sat at a table in a cafe. It was a nice job you did last night, Tolliver. Thanks, Mr. Baird. 
It's uh, too bad that you weren't equally observant in the office. I uh, don't know what you mean. According to the accounts, Tad Wilkins stole the company's cash regularly over a period of six months. But what's that got to do with me being observant? If you'd kept your eyes open, Tolliver, you'd have noticed the shortage. But we each kept our own books. Besides, Tad was the manager. It was his job to oversee things. Well, just the same. It isn't possible that Wilkins could steal money for so long without giving you some clue. After what you did last night, Tolliver, I intended to recommend you as manager of the office here. But in the light of your failure to suspect Wilkins... I did suspicion Tad wasn't on the level with the company, Mr. Baird. Some of the things he did struck me as being on the shady side, but... Well, I ain't a man to make trouble unless I'm sure of my facts. It's easy for you to say that now. And I myself might believe it, but uh, I couldn't persuade the main office to believe it. They didn't suspect anything was wrong until they saw the reports. You mean if I'd notify the company of my suspicions, I'd, I'd get the promotion? That's right. Well, uh, I, I was going to notify them when I learned you were coming to Elbow Bend. Can you prove that? Well, sure, sure. I, uh, I, I wrote down everything I suspected about Tad Wilkins in the letter. But you didn't mail it, huh? No, no, I didn't. I, I was all set to when I heard you were coming, so I figured there wasn't any use. Have you still got the letter? Well, well yes, yes, I reckon I have. I don't recollect throwing it away. Well, then that puts a different aspect on the matter. You mean I'll get to be manager after all? I don't see why not. I'll forward your letter to the main office as proof of your alertness. Mm, that'd be first rate. Well, I have some business to attend to now, but I suppose you'll have the letter ready for me at the office this afternoon? Sure, Mr. Baird, I'll have it ready. You can call for it this afternoon, anytime you want. Good afternoon, Tulliver. Howdy, Mr. Baird. You're early. Well, not too early for you to find the letter, I hope. Oh, no, no, I have it right here. Hmm. You write a nice, neat hand, Tulliver. Thanks, Mr. Baird. And a handsome signature, too. Well, I... I always kind of prided myself in the way I signed my name, even if I do say so myself. Well, I think this letter will suit my purpose very well. Is, uh, is it everything you thought it would be? Yes, Tolliver. Even down to the last detail. The date. I don't savvy. It's dated two days ago. That's when I, uh, I wrote it. Naturally. Oh, by the way, Tolliver, which are the account books that you kept? Uh, why, these here. These are all mine. And these others in this desk, I presume, are the ones Wilkins had charge of? You should know that, Mr. Baird. You found the fake entries in them yourself. Oh, so I did, so I did. But there's uh, nothing like making sure, huh, Tulliver? You're acting mighty peculiar all of a sudden. Like you maybe had something up your sleeve. Maybe I have. I don't know. Open the door, Tulliver. I'm expecting some guests. It's a sheriff. Inside, Lefty. Don't try any wrong moves. Seems to me you've taken care of that yourself, Sheriff, with these handcuffs. Hey, what's Lefty Harris doing here? He's been sentenced to hang. You'd like to see that happen, wouldn't you, Tolliver? I don't savvy. What's this all about? Well, I brought Lefty here just like you asked, Mr. Baird. But what for? I'll be hogtied if I know. You'll find out very shortly, Sheriff. Can't you take these bracelets off me till we go outside again, Sheriff? Not a chance, Lefty. You're a condemned killer, and I aim to treat you like one. Now, stand over in that corner where I can keep an eye on you. I don't see why you brought me here in the first place. Who's got a hook on the hole? Say, who's that? Another guest, Tulliver. Why, well, it's the engine. The one I saw in the office trying to rob the safe. Lift your hands, Redskin. Oh, you don't need that gun, Sheriff. I invited him here. Ah, uh, you get a letter? Yes, Tonto. I have Tulliver's note right here. Not good. Me bring suicide note from Mask Friend. What in thunder is this all about? I brought all of you together at the suggestion of a Mask Friend. In order to expose the murderer of Tad Wilkins. Are you loco? Lefty Harris has already been tried and sentenced as Tad's killer. Thanks to you, you yellow-livered snake. I've got evidence, Tolliver, to prove that the man who killed Wilkins is the same who stole the company's cash. Tad stole the cash. You saw how he did it? His account books, huh? Of course. What more proof could you want? Tad not steal cash. What's that, engine? Me find body with Lefty. Find suicide note. Yeah, you look here. Let me see that, Redskin. What do you mean by taking that paper with you and interfering with the law? Oh, here, note. You take good look. Uh, well, it's just what you said it was. I don't see nothing peculiar about it. Well, let me explain, Sheriff. This is a letter written by Tolliver. What about it? It's dated two days ago. But the chances are it was written this morning. That's a lie. I wrote it on the date it says. Well, it doesn't matter, Tolliver. The fact is, you wrote it. It bears your signature. 
Sheriff, I want you to compare the handwriting in this letter with that in the suicide note Wilkins is supposed to have written. Oh. Mm, let me see now. Uh, say, they're exactly alike. Ah, uh, them written by same man. Don't believe them, Sheriff. They're trying to frame me. You framed yourself, Tolliver. You wrote both notes. You low down coyote. Stay away from me. I tell you, it's a trick. You can't prove a thing against me. You not only killed Wilkins, but you were the one who stole the cash. You're lying. The books show Your it. books show a shortage for six months, Tolliver. Your scheme nearly worked when you switched the records and claimed Tad Wilkins' books for your own. But the masked man you saw in here last night wasn't trying to rob the safe. He was checking the handwriting of this suicide note against your accounts. The handwriting matched. Don't believe him, Sheriff. He's framing me. It makes sense to me, Tolliver. You were grafting the company regular. Then when you saw you were going to be found out, you switched books so Tad would take the blame. That's right. Then to keep Tad from revealing the truth, you killed him. Made it look like suicide due to a guilty conscience. You're not taking me. I yeah. It. Make a move and I'll use it. Don't be a fool, Tolliver. You can't get away. Yes, again, you tin star tenderfoot. I'm doing it. Stop him. Don't let him get through that door. Just try to stop me, Lefty. I'll put a slug square between your eyes. <laughs> Happy hunting, Jim. Don't move my arm. Grab him. Do not get away now. Doggone you. you. Somebody on the outside had to build the gun out of my hand. I'll take charge of him, Indian. You're going to stretch a rope, Tolliver. Who on earth could have fired that shot? Why, that lone ranger. Doggone tootin' it was. There ain't another hombre within a hundred miles who could show as pretty shooting as that. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.